All right, time to mount the motor. So I've been checking the height and everything. So I take, and I've got my shims ready. So I'm gonna put a little goop, goop on this guy and drop him in. Okay, and we'll put a little goop on this one. And drop him in. Okay, then I made a shim. I took another one of these. I flattened it with a hammer. And I'm going to go ahead and put some goop. Just a little bit there. I'm going to press him down. That is going to be my base for my motor. Now, I check the motor and to get it to run the right direction. Let's turn turn them around. Okay, so get them in the right, the right direction. I'm, I'm going to put the wires in the rear of it. And using the bench tester, I determined that this red dot needs to be on the bottom if I want it to run the right way. So now all I'm going to do is this. I'm going to do a little bit of goop. Yep, he's gonna fit in there, so I'm gonna get a little bit on the corner. Not too much. Well, that's probably too much. Tiny bit. Tiny bit. He's ready to go in. I've already tinned him, but just in case, let's go ahead. Let's just hit him quick. Just in case. Let's put, a little, let's put a little flux on there. And I gotta work fast because that goop starts to set up really quick. And oh yeah, I did tin them, but we're just gonna I'm just gonna show you again. Tin them. A little bit right there. A bit right there. A little bit right there. Good to go. Now we're going to mount him. Not using anything else. It kind of fits in the slot here. Just like that. That is how we mount the motor. Okay, didn't use any special mounts or nothing. That is our motor mounted. Here are the, here are the leads for the ultraviolet ground effects motor's good to go probably in about half hour or so it'll be it'll be pretty well set up all right let's move on this this video is going to be so long and i got to show you kind of where we're at all right so i put in the ultraviolet super purple ground effects there, right there. Now I want to show you this. I've been talking about these silicone drive shafts, and I've tested them on a number of locomotives now, especially my brass stuff. And the cool thing about them is you can connect it to two different shaft sizes, which is very helpful for just drop in and replace. And this is going to be a really long span right here. And I'm going to show you how we do it. So this is a one millimeter inside, and it is a three millimeter, two or three millimeter outside, something like that. Anyways, I got it. It was less than 20 bucks for a lifetime supply. I found it on Amazon, and it, um, it was amazing. And I needed this to replace the actual rubber hoses in the Tenshoto GP20 and the SD24. So I'm gonna take my exacto knife and I'm just going to make a little bit, make the opening just a tiny bit wider, just at this, at the ends, just a little bit, just enough so I can get it on the shaft. Okay, that one's already got one. And that's all it takes. Okay, now the cool thing about this stuff is to get it on, you push it. Okay, so we pushed it. There, it's on. Then, go back here to the back. 
I'm going to push it on. I'm going to push it on here. Just enough, and I'm going to take my little, little pliers here, and I'm going to push it on a little more. Okay. Now, let's see if we can get it straightened out. I don't want it to be all wobbly, but I don't want it so tight that I can't turn side to side. So I basically want it kind of straight. We have done, just think over the course of the last few years, how many different kinds of drive shafts have we made? We made plastic pipe with wires drilled through the end. We made copper dog bones. We've made 3D printed ones. You name it, we've made drive shafts and we've made U joints on all kinds of stuff. Now let's take a look. Okay, man, we got to tighten this a little bit. Let's tighten it up a little more. Give it a little push. Now, so the silicone drive shaft is actually stronger, it grips tighter. It's hard to pull off, but you can push it off with no problem. So now, if I turn this, okay, I see a little bit. We can just take up that slack. A little more, okay. It should be pretty much, yeah, let's uh, tighten up this end. I want to make sure I can still turn with no problem. Ooh, that looks good. That's not bad. Let me tighten up just a little bit more. Okay, that's looking really good now. There's the drive shafts. So if you got a locomotive where you've replaced the motor and you're having trouble finding U joints and parts for it, this has turned out to be awesome. And the first one we did was that uh, Tenshoto SD24, and that's been a couple years now. It's still championship quality. It's excellent. And let's tighten up this guy just a little bit. There, there, okay. This is so easy, such an easy fix. So you know on some of those like the train line GP9, that tiny dog bone that always comes loose, you can get rid of the couplings on either end and you can put a silicone hose and you're good to go. I suggest using the hose on both sides if you're gonna do that, only because they'll match better. And we did this on that GP9 just like two months ago and it worked amazing. And that thing, had the 280 motor in it, the super powerful one, and that locomotive is so powerful. But there it is. All right, it's time to mount the platform. So I made this acrylic platform, these holes in it, to handle all this wiring. It's gonna go on top of this motor just like that. So what we're gonna do, let's go ahead on and th thread. I purposely made, I don't know if you can even see it. I made lettering on it. So I would know which side was up. All right. So let's go ahead and thread. We got red. Oh, no, we don't want that. Okay, we got red. And black. Going to do some sewing here. Mm-hmm. Then we need to thread a yellow. And a green. Just like that. There we go. Okay, then we need to thread a red. These wire now these wires are extra long because we're gonna trim them in a little bit here once we get them all threaded. And we get our we gotta make a PC board yet for this, a couple of them probably. Okay, but we're going to thread these wires through here. And we're going to put this yellow through there. The yellow and the greens are the purple. 
background effects, which are actually now ultraviolet ground effects. So that, now I know not everybody can make an acrylic one like I made it, but if you have a material that's stiff like acrylic, or you could even make a take a piece of acrylic, you can cut out this hole for the motor. And you can, acrylic is super easy to drill through. And I use it because there's a scrap place that sells it by the pound of little cuts, bits and pieces from places that, uh, that are not, they can't sell. So they put it in these huge big bins and they, I can go to the scrap place and get it by the pound. There we go. Everybody's in there. All right, so now we are going to take the goop, the amazing goop, and this is how we're going to attach it. All right, so I want to attach this like that, mm -hmm. and I want to attach backhand, of course, yep, got to go backhand, and uh, let's get the goop on there in the backhand. Maybe we'll get just a little bit uh, on the front. Okay, good enough. Close enough. Let's pull everybody tight. Yep. Uh huh. And we're going to stick them on just like that. We stick them on there and then pull, pull, pull. Everybody is pulled through. Now, now that we got them on here, let's go ahead and clean the excess. Whoops, oh no, not that. Okay, there we go. Okay, back in business. Let's clean the excess with our X-Acto blade here and clean, very nice. And let's go to the other side here and clean by scraping it off. Yep, just like that. Pull you guys tight again and on you go. There it is. There's our platform. That's our working platform. Now that is what we want. So this platform now gives us... So I'm going to go set this at the drying station in a second here. And the big fan blowing on it on low is going to set this up. It'll probably take a half hour to an hour and it'll be all set up and ready to roll and that's our platform and the platform gives us space because we need to mount some things here we need a PC board okay so we need a PC board probably two of them collect the power right PC board Handle the two light functions. And I, somewhere around here, got a, uh, oh, yeah. So I made this from another one, a three, a three strip one. So the Digitrax DH126 has two light functions, but they use a common. Here will be our common, one and two. And one of them is going to be for the beacon, and one's going to be for the lights. And I'll just cut a piece of this off. That's going in there. A bridge rectifier for the constant lighting is going in there. The decoder is going in here somewhere, and all of our what all of our extra wires are in place now. So that is our platform. This gives us working area, and we need working area to mount stuff. And it's it's a little flexible, and the goop is going to keep it on here just right. That's how we're going to mount all of the different things we have and we're probably going to go head on and use use a quick disconnect like this and mount some stuff into the top of the shell like headlights beacon lights everything and have them disconnect from from these guys something like that that's where we're at all right decals are done i got the handrail started they're not painted yet and i did coat this with some Rust-Oleum matte finish. It is not as as dull as I was hoping for, but uh, I, I say we're just going to live with it. It'll be okay. Um, this is not contest piece. 
This is the holiday special. All right, so now, remember when I did this cab and I had painted it kind of a black color and I went ahead, I glossed it, did, did what I had to do on the decals, as you can see the little American flag, and I did all the outlining, everything. I made the number boards, which are right here. I only need the front ones on this one, but uh, there they are. I got to cut them out, put them in. And then I went ahead and did the Mr. Metal Chrome Silver. Because you know I like them silver roofs. Okay, so you have to do that towards the end when you're finishing. So I painted it on. Now, this stuff, you get some. You're going to look in it and you're going to see, oh no, it's all dried up. And it's gone. Using lacquer thinner. You go to a hardware store, you get um, one of them tins of lacquer thinner. Uh, you put that on your brush and it brings back, there's a ton of paint still in here, even though it looks dried up. And the lacquer thinner brings it right back and you're good to go again. So the way this stuff works is after you have done your, I consider this the final clear coat. I wish it was I wish it was more matte finish than it is, but it is what it is, and we're gonna, just going to go on with it. And then you paint the things that were silver, that you painted silver before, or or black in preparation for silver. And unfortunately, this thing turned out like super, super shiny. A little bit more than I would like, but it, hey, we're going to go with it. Um, up close... It's looking way too shiny. But a little ways back, looks just like somebody replaced it and didn't paint it. Now, I'm going to show you what we do with this. So here is the finished cab. And I have painted this headlight bracket and this roof with the Mr. Metal. I'm going to show you how it works. So once you get it on there and it's nice and dried, I'm going to take a microfiber cloth first. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just, and I'm using the, I'm not using the fuzzy side. I'm using, using the other side. I'm just going to start going in circles. I'm going to polish it and I'm going to polish it a lot. And yeah, there's some brush strokes in here, but it's Mr. Metal. So I'm going to polish it, and what is going to happen, as you can already see, the reason for painting black underneath is because you get a better silver. And you know where I learned that from? Watching Gundam models. Watch guys who build Gundam, which is a Japanese um, anime robot. They are masters of metal. If you want to do something that's going to be metal, they are the masters of it. So that's where I learned this from. And I want this thing to be like, almost like chrome. I mean, that's just the policy here in Champion City. All the locomotives generally have this chromed top. Why? I don't know. It's the future. Who could possibly know why it's supposed to be like that, but it is. And we're just going to polish it. And we're going to put some elbow grease into it. We're going to polish it and polish it. And then it's going to look like this. See that? I can reflect light off that now. Look at that. Reflection. That is my top. That's what I like. Now, some of you don't like that, like that, but uh, it looks like it has been chromed. Hey, and that's the way it goes in the future. For some reason, chrome tops are in. There we go. Now, let's hit this headlight. We don't need to hit them too much. Just hit them a little bit, and boom. We got a chromed 
headlight housing. Now, what I'm going to do then, and, oh, forgot. i got to polish two other guys. On the back here, I did that bracket. So let's polish them up. And it doesn't take much. And I polished these two, these two marker light things. They are going to get some Swarovski jewels. And there, my headlight bracket is super, super shiny, just the way I want it. It is definitely chromed. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of panel liner. Just a little bit. Not very much, just a little bit. I'm going to hit the bottom side of these. Barely. Hit them around the edge. Barely. Mm-hmm. Why don't we have a little bit of an outline? All we're doing is sharpening them. Then they're going to get their jewels in them. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be like that. And that is the look I want for them. Okay, now I'm going to hit this guy around the edge. Usually you can touch it and let it flow. In this case, we got to brush it just a little bit. And what this does, one of the problems we have in painting is hiding edges. So this outlines edges, sharpens them, and if there was a mistake here, that mistake has now disappeared. And then I want to hit the brackets just a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. Give it a little sharpening. There we go. Sweet! That is sweet. Now, let's go ahead and polish up the front here. It's got this thing. I can't remember what this thing is called, but it's on there. And I like to make it silver. I think it's a different color. But uh, a little polishing. We're good to go. Good to go. Now let's go ahead and hit that with an outline. Just a tiny bit. We're going to go underneath. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go over the top between, around, and around. Yes. Now. Now we got a sweet headlight that looks like an add-on part. And what we're going to be doing with these, we're going to attempt to do fiber optics on these lights. We'll see if it works. If it doesn't, we'll have to go to a different plan go well if it doesn't work we will go back to Swarovski jewels on those we're gonna try the fiber optics first All right we're ready for a test and we're gonna see how this thing works here so let's let's pull the shell off make a look under the hood now we got a few things left to do. We're going to add some resistors for lights and a disconnect for the headlights and the cab light. We'll get to that in a while. Let's find out how this thing runs. That's what we want to know. See if these silicone hose drive shafts are really that good. And guess where we're going? Yep. You know it. 15 inch radius right there. Look at that. Very nice. 15 inch radius tunnel motor. 
with silicone hose drive shafts. All you can hear are gears in this thing. Let's take a look right up close to them and see what we can see. There's our silicone hose drive shafts. Going around the 15 inch. Remember that modification we made? Nice and smooth. No problems at all so far. We are looking really good. All that's left now, we'll finish off the shell. Is there any much left to do on this? Put some lights in. And we will have our new Giant 1802. Going to paint them handrails. We're going to be ready to roll. Looking good. The silicone shafts are doing the job just as good as we wanted them to. There it is. Well, we can add some digital momentum to it. Uh, and we can fine tune it once it's fully operational. All right, I want to get this out to you right away before we move on let's re let's review this wiring because it, at first glance it's not going to appear obvious everything that we did and i'd actually say this is this is pretty clean wiring in that it's layered so the first thing we did was we brought power from the trucks the red and the black okay they come to the middle on a little PC board. One of these little copper clad guys we made. So you can just take a cut off wheel, cut a gap, you know, have two copper strips, and you can solder onto them. We've got the wiring from the back, the red and the black, also to the PC board. Then we put a bridge rectifier on the PC board and gooped it in place. We connected its plus and minus to another PC board here. We connected the leads from the motor to another PC board here. Okay, that gave us the ability to use the bridge rectifiers for the constant lighting. And as you can see right now, two resistors means I got two lights, those two purple lights. Okay, and they have the green and the yellow that come up. Okay, then, so we've got a red and black go to here. And we've got another red and black to go to the motor. So then we were ready to put in the decoder. So we put in the DH126. And it gets red to red, black to black from our main power collector. So after we got the first bit of wiring in, we put on the Digitrax and we connected red to red, black to red. Okay, then it goes into the decoder, comes out the decoder, the orange goes to the motor PC board, and the gray goes to the motor PC board. That runs power through the decoder out to the motor. And there we have it. Now, we got this little guy up here, this three-piece PC board, we made it like this. It has the lights. So you've got a white, a yellow, and the blue is the common. Uh, and so now we get, these are our two lights on the Digitrax. And what we're going to do is we are going to put a disconnect, one of these guys, on there. And we'll put the other end up inside the shell. So, and we're going to use two of them. One for the yellow-blue combination, one for the white-blue combination. One of them will be all the headlights... The other one will be the beacon. 
And then when we take the shell off, we will be able to just disconnect them. And we'll probably do that right under the dynamic brakes like we did in the other ST40s. So we can take the dynamic brake hatch off and in there will be the other ends that will be connected to the lights. And then we're going to do one other disconnect, which is going to come from the bridge rectifier. That's going to go up into the shell. And that is going to run the cab light. We're going to have a light on in the cab. And then we should be good to go. And what we're going to be using, we're going to use some more flat panel SMDs for the nose light, the cab headlight, the rear headlight, and the light in the cab. And then we're going to use a yellow LED for the beacon. But the way you approach something like this is you just start from the beginning, bring the power up, then distribute that power where you need it, and then layer on your decoder. And notice, no bird's nest, no bunch of wires running everywhere. It's, it's, it's that easy. You, just, you can just keep going on top of it. You end up like this. This is actually very easy to troubleshoot. And if there's a problem, very easy to undo. Then I was able to sneak in one more lead weight as a brace underneath the back of our platform. I like to sneak in, you know, that's another quarter ounce of weight. So that was kind of, the shell is big enough that, that we can do that. All right, now let's get on with the lighting. This is my two light function disconnect board. It's the three strip PC board. Alright, so on Digitrax, the blue one is your, your plus wire, and that one is common. So with the two light functions, the, the yellow and the white, one's going to the beacon, and one is going to the lights. So we got two disconnects, and they are connected. So that way, I can open this piece up on the top, and I can pull out those little, I'm going to pull these guys out. Then I can take the shell off without having to undo a bunch of wiring. And it's just in here with goop. The resistors are the returns. And they're glued in there and they're soldered directly to the PC board. A very nice solid point so that uh, disconnecting this is not going to wear it out. So that's how we're going to do that. Then, here's some jeweler's wire. Let's see if we can zoom out a little bit. Okay. In there, you can see down there, uh, this is a surface mount device. It's a yellow, basically it's an SMD light. It's yellow, and I use jewelry wire. So I, I'm going to be able to attach this jewelry wire directly to the shell, and it'll stay put. And it's copper wire, so it's nice and conductive. Then in here, I've got another disconnect for the cab light. And then in the rear, another SMD is going to provide the lights in the back. Jewelry wire again. And then when we get it up here... When we want to get the shell off, all we got to do is open this up. We won't take it off. Open it up, disconnect, and shell comes off. It's that easy. Then we can get right at the underside without unsoldering and without uh, pulling up a bird's nest of wires. So there. One of the uses for all those nuts that are on the workbench here should be ready by now. Inside the cab, there's a cab light, and there is the headlight. And I put a little bit of green liquid electrical tape just to hold those wires in place so I can get the, get the cab installed, and then we're good to go. Then we just connect up these wires, and then I'll probably just uh, kind of super glue them a little bit in, in there places so that they don't ever touch each other although they do have a coating on them which is not conductive 
at least not in the bread ward. They still shouldn't touch each other. So a little super glue and we'll be good to go with that. That is where we're at and then we're ready to put this baby together. Okay, the wiring is in. Let's take a look at it. That is the shell wiring. Now it looks complicated. But it's not. It's essentially a puzzle. It goes in layers. Start with the easiest and work your way and it'll end up with something that looks complicated but really wasn't that bad. If I can do it, you can do it. If you are kind of new to wiring, um, this is what you want to get. This is called a breadboard. And as you can see, I've got one of these surface mount lights on it. They're like LEDs, but they're called SMBs. And I've got a 1K resistor. Start with the breadboard and just learn an LED plus a resistor. Once you learn that, you can learn to put a couple LEDs and you can experiment here. When you experiment here, then you can start figuring out a way to transfer what you built here into your shell. That's the best way to start out because you don't have to do a bunch of soldering right there. In fact, you don't really have to do, you don't have to do any of you don't to experiment on a breadboard. Let's uh, put this guy in here. You just need to remember to learn the directions that things go. Once you learn the directions of things, uh, then you can build from there. And I have this connected to the benchtop power supply. But you can use any, like my good old Tech 2 down here. You can use that to get yourself started. Breadboards are pretty cheap. They come with lots of little leads and things. And you can learn electronics that way. And you can get, you build a build on that skill. But everything that we've done here and everything that we've done here is basically a combination of a resistor and the bridge rectifier would be the second thing you should learn. And then you'll have it. Now let's take a look at the features of this. Okay, so this is meant so that you can open this top. And then, once you got the top open, you'll be able to take the tweezers and you can unplug. See those white boxes there? That's where these little two pin connectors plug in. You'll be able to unplug the lights and pull the shell off. Everything else is now self contained in the shell. That's it. All right, now we're going to connect it up and then. We're going to finish it up. Okay, we are right at the end. So now we're going to put on couplers. We're going to use these 148s. And I have sprayed them with Zep Graphite. Take my little paintbrush here and polish them up. Now I have found that spraying your couplers with Graphite and then polishing them makes them way more reliable. Not just a little bit more reliable, a lot more reliable. And I used to paint this graphite on, and now I spray it on with, with Zep. A friend of mine works for Zep, and he got me this can of graphite spray, and it is amazing. And that's how I like them. Okay. So it was ready. Let's snap them together. We'll screw them in place. Let's take a look where we're at. We have got on, let's see here. So we've got our jewels on. As you can see, now you can still see the goop around the edges. When that sets up and is, dries, it'll be gone. You can see the jewels, very sparkly. 
And I like using those because they catch your eye from far away. These are not just plain old craft jewels. I got them at, uh, I, I think, Joann's or Michael's. And they're actually Swarovskis. They're like prisms. And then in just on the front here in the headlights, don't look like much. When you see these on, this is fiber optics. And my fiber optic was not really big enough to uh, create the lens. But I use it anyways, and it turned out that it really does work. And we'll get a look at that in a second here. And uh, it, it, we haven't really talked about using it before. I know I keep saying I'm going to do it. And so I did it on this with the SMDs behind it. And I'm going to do it later, and I'm going to show you how I did it. Because I learned from a guy who does it all the time on scenery. And he showed me some cool tricks to do with it. And on the back, of course... We got our Markle Light -like jewels. Now on the back, these are just the regular old uh, acrylic inserts that you find in these models. That's what we're doing for ditch lights. We're not going to get fancy. We're just going to do that. And you don't have to have ditch lights on both sides, but I did see uh, a CP SD20. And it had, on the front, it had ditch lights up on a bracket. And in the rear, they're mounted on the frame. So that's where we're at. Put this together, and we're done. This is it. We are done. We're going to test it, and you're going to see it. There it is. Complete. Okay, so I got low light. And so what you're seeing is a cab light that is way brighter than it really is. But you can definitely see the ultraviolet ground lights and there it is and let's turn on his regular lights oh there we go okay we got the beacon going and check out the nose lights these are the fiber optics where I use fiber optics and that's not really something that we're really going to get into yet but I put them on a uh, gyro light and I put those SMDs behind them. It's pretty bright. Now I got to get some bigger, bigger fiber optics before you really get into using fiber optic strands. But uh, they look good so far. I mean, they look pretty good. Let's just check out the rear because I have it set to uh, front and rear are on all the time. Now the rear has only. Those are just the acrylics that they come with. They're pretty bright. I mean, they're not bad. So this is really grainy because this camera is not a night vision camera. But they're pretty decent. And there you can see the cab light. The camera picks up way more light than you can see for real. A lot more light. I mean, that's a lot of light that it's picking up right there. And let's go ahead and uh, pick uh, 1801. Let's turn on his lights. Okay. So he's got his light on. And uh, back him up. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and move him up just a little bit. Okay, I got. I don't have any momentum turning on yet. And I'm going to turn on the lights now. Okay, lights on. I have not set any momentum on this guy, and I will. But totally ready for operations. We are hearing nothing but gears right now because of those silicone hoses. And the super powerful FF-180. Now an FF-180 is, as you know, it's a size 1, a length 8, and a 0 means 3 poles. But it's 24 volts, which means it has better windings. And it has got super powerful torque, which means it has no problem turning this thing in.
So there it is. Now you can see a better look at the cab lights. Okay, that's the way the cab lights really look. They're yellow on the inside with green. And uh, we did it. We made it. The holiday special is complete. So the um, beacon is set to rotary beacon on the Digitrack settings. And we've got it. And there he goes. All right, let's get him one more, one last look at the front, which has the, we are going to get into fiber optic strands more this year. But as you can see, they're decent. You can see them. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. You can see the fiber optics. They don't look too bad. They look decent. They're just, all they are are cut off ends. Stuck in the slots with some SMDs behind them. Nothing special. If I can do this, you can do this. And that's what I want to say for this new year. Is, if I can do it, you can do it. It's going to be a great year.